Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Matt Gill of White Rock Minerals. How are you today? I'm well, Tracy. Thank you. For all of you investors from the cannabis sector, we're trying to draw you into gold. And of course, there's a gold bull market in Australia right now. Is that correct, Matt? So gold prices in Australian terms are going really well, over $1,800 an ounce. Uh, lots of mines in Australia are making lots of money and we want to be one of them. So we have an Australian, we have gold, and we have a gold Australian company. So would you mind telling us more about White Rock Minerals? And, you know, this is one of the companies I saw at a conference recently that I was so impressed with. I just liked the overall story. Can you share this with the Investor Intel audience, please? Sure. So we've got two projects. As I say, we've got two children. Uh, we have a gold and silver project in northern New South Wales in Australia. Uh, but we also have a zinc silver gold project in central Alaska. So great underpinning precious metals to jurisdictions and that in a nutshell is white rock minerals. Let's go through this please. Uh, let's starting with the gold. How many ounces do you currently have proven with your gold resource? So we in the language that we use a jork reserve um, of 160,000 ounces of gold. That sits within a resource of over 340,000 ounces of gold. That's just in our New South Wales asset. Um, we've got a similar amount of gold sitting in our Alaskan asset as well. So if you add those two together, uh, it's over 600,000 ounces of gold. And so for new investors into the gold market, what does this actually mean? And talk to us a little bit about the grade, please. Okay, so that's a really good question. So grade is a bit of a concept that I'm a mining engineer, but for some people it's a little bit hard to understand. So grade is the richness of the rock. Um, grade is measured in grams per tonne. Uh, to give you an idea, the average gold grade in Australia is a little bit over one to one and a half grams a tonne. What does that mean? That means if you had one million tennis balls, one of those is a gold grain. So you think, wow, that's very low grade, but that's the trick with gold. But gold is so valuable that you can only, you only need one or two tennis balls out of a million to be very profitable. And so that's deemed to be high grade? So high grade, it depends. So How many tennis balls do I need to be high grade? So really good question. So generally high grade, and that would help you mine underground, probably anything certainly over 10 grams a tonne or 10 tennis balls per million. So over 10 grams would be generally considered high grade. And anything probably under one gram would be considered low grade. So I need 10 tennis balls out of a million. Yeah, and that would be a great mine if you had a mine that was 10 grams a tonne. So our Mount Carrington child is one and a half grams a tonne. That's average for Australia. And that's average means, well, 50% of them are worse than that. So with the Australian gold bull market that's presently happening, is it too late to get in, Matt? In my opinion, never too late. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we also have silver and zinc. Would you just yeah. talk to us a little bit about that resource, please? Sure, sure. So silver, we have as much silver in value as we have gold in value at Mount Carrington in New South Wales. And in fact, in Alaska, we've got twice as much silver um, as we have in our New South Wales assets. So we have actually 70 million ounces of silver between those two, which is the equivalent in value to 1 million ounces of gold. So it's a significant asset base as well. So I'm going to ask you the same question we've been asking a number of resource CEOs recently or managing directors, as we refer to you in Australia, is that correct? Yes. Um, why are you currently a managing director of a resource company and you're not getting on board with being a managing director of a cannabis company? So look, I'm a, so when I went through uni, you know, you have a choice about careers and I guess my DNA is mining, solutions, problem solving, working with people. Um, so while I may have partaken in that industry, uh, it was certainly illegal then and in Australia it's still illegal. Um, I, mining just resonated with the technical and the people side of it and I've done that for 30 years and uh, have never looked back and I have no regrets and I'm very happy in that career. So I'm a young investor and I'm looking at diversifying into a gold, and in this case we've got silver, a technology metal, and we have zinc. Why would I select white rock minerals over some of your competitors? What are your biggest competitive advantages? 
So I think uh, board, I don't think investors give enough consideration to the quality of the people that are handling their money. Um, so two of the four of us on our board are mining engineers. So with respect to many companies, we're not lifestyle lawyers or accountants. So we want to do stuff that adds value. I think that's really important for an investor. Uh, I think uh, commodity diversification is also pretty important so that your portfolio is not all in one commodity. So gold, silver, zinc, you know, one can be up, two could be up, one could be down, uh, but they balance out. And I think a really important component that I think differentiates us is jurisdiction diversification. I don't think investors give enough thought to sovereign risk. Um, so being in Australia uh, and being in Alaska, and Alaska in particular is in the top five of the Fraser Institute, I think an investor needs to look at those components, not just how good the grade or, or that it's a hot metal at the minute, um, but look at some of those other factors that I think help give it credibility and basis and support. So one more question, Matt. When do you think the bull market, the bull gold rush is going to come to North America? So if you look at US gold prices, they're not bad already. I mean, they were peaking over 1300 US only in the last couple of weeks. A little bit volatile, but that's the nature of the mining industry in general. Uh, Australia is a little bit different. We get that exchange rate kicker, which is why we actually do quite well. We, we base it in US dollars and then have an exchange rate. Uh, so I would have thought generally that the you know, gold bull market is already knocking on the door of North America. But you should come to Australia first. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today, Matt. Okay, my pleasure. Thanks, Tracy.